Are you a modeler who doesn't know how to portray woodland scenes? Specifically Welsh conifers and dry, light, depraved ground? Well, I got you, because I've worked it out. Hi guys! If you remember back to the video where I planned this layout, you may remember that the entire middle section was going to be a woodland scene. But I've never actually modelled this before. So after a bit of head scratching, this is what I came up with. So the first thing to do was to prepare the foam for the base. This meant that I got my kitchen knife out to smooth out any rough or sharp edges. Then I could start to fill in any large holes with a thick mix of filler with a bit of brown paint. The thicker mix helps to fill in the larger gaps as it won't run out again. This thicker mix can also be used to fill in the gaps between the foam and the walling that I made in the road video, as I want the scenery to come right up to the edge. With any big gaps now filled in, the filler is watered down to a thinner mix and thinly spread over the entire hillside. This will give a good hard base to apply scenery. Whilst that's drying, I'll whip up some trees. In real life, the chorus area is covered with conifers. These are kebab skewers and broken into two, they're a good size for four millimeter trees. Using a sharp knife, I start to form the stick to a gradual point at one end and a short point on the other. As this one will help embed the tree into the foam. Whilst the trees will be mainly covered by foliage, the lower branches tend to be bare. So to represent these, I'll drill holes through the bottom section of the sticks. Conifers tend to be very tall and straight, so these sticks work pretty well as a base. A lot of my scenery can be done within a realistic time frame. I am not someone who will spend four days on a single tree. Kudos if you are. Kudos for me for having other things to do. This is florist wire, and it'll help form the lower branches. So it needs to be cut into a number of smaller bits. I try and make these more random lengths for a more natural look on the trees. These little sections of wire can now be threaded through the holes in the sticks and a drop of super glue will fix them in place. I started to bend the two parts of wire into different directions and it makes them look a bit more random on the tree. So after a little bit of time, this is how many trees I could be bothered to make. I have no idea if this is enough for the layout, but I live on the edge. I've had this flexi bark by Green Scenes for many years now and I've never actually used it. So I'll use it now. Like I said, I'm a daredevil. It's a slightly rubbery, gritty filler, and I haven't actually seen how people use it, so I just thought I'd start to plaster it over the tree. I wasn't really impressed when I first put it on, but as it dried, it gave a really good texture to the tree, and it also blended the little branches into the trunk, which was a bonus. The branches still looked a bit static and fake, so looking back on prototype photos, I started to bend the little branches a bit, and this helped, and I was happy. The colour of the flexi bark is a brownie pinky colour, so I sprayed the trees with an ash grey. I could have gone to town weathering the trees, but you know, grey will do. 
and time for foliage. I've really grown fond of Woodland Scenics polyfiber if you hadn't noticed. And I couldn't see why it wouldn't work for the trees as well. But to get the classic conifer shape, I pulled off chunks of the polyfiber and formed them into large flat discs. Due to conifers getting thinner towards the top, the discs need to be formed into various sizes. I just made a bunch of them and handpicked them to suit the tree at the time. Starting with the largest discs, I push them down onto the trunk. This isn't actually that easy because the surface is now really rough and it grips onto the polyfiber as it passes down over it. And as I mentioned, you need to swap discs over. I struggled with this, but I imagine a two year old would have got them in the correct order first time. Maybe I'll get the assistant to do the next batch. When they're all on, I used a pair of scissors to chop away any fibres working against the cores. And after a good half hour of stacking discs, I ended up with kind of a forest on the workbench. Though the polyfibre alone didn't look too convincing. So time to step up. Level 2 started with a good coating of scenic glue and short static grass fibres were applied to both the tree and my thumb. My supply of static grass is dwindling at the moment and I only have one colour, and this particular colour is terrible for conifers, so I'll paint them. The colour I opted for was a miniature paint number 13 deep bronze green. It's a fine deep green which doesn't look anything like deep bronze green, but it's good enough for these conifers. This is applied through the airbrush. The colour change here looks a bit subtle, but compared to the unpainted trees you can see how much darker they look. Well, that's the conifers done, but I wanted a little bit of variation. So I have this box of mixed seafoam trees by WWS Scenics or WW Scenics? WWS Scenics. WW Scenics Scenics. Look at that, lots of seafoam trees that don't really look like trees. So no, I won't be planting them as they are, and you should feel guilty for thinking that I would. They do, however, make a pretty good base to build upon. The first job for these trees is to cut them to shape, and that includes removing lower branches, and possibly gluing more bits on to fill unwanted gaps further up. The colour of sea foam isn't really something I enjoy looking at either, so I'll quickly paint them with oak brown. And yes, I know tree trunks aren't exactly brown brown, but it'll act more like shading below the foliage. Note to self, buy more gloves. When the trees are dry, I add the polyfiber. This doesn't actually need gluing on, as it gets caught up in the sea foam branches all on its own. I try and keep the application quite light on this. Like the shrubbery and hedges in previous videos on the channel, which I highly recommend because they're ace, I spray the trees with scenic glue and sprinkle on knock dark green leaf material. Again this application is quite light to try and show the sea foam through the foliage. Finally, knock light green leaf material is added, in an even lighter coat than the dark. And this is all I made using sea foam, lots of variety in size though. The filler is pretty much dry now, so attention turns back to the hillside. PVA is applied and brushed to cover the entire area. The glue coat is quite thick to give it a fighting chance at holding onto the scenic layer. And what will that be, I hear you ask? Well, you remember the dirt I mixed into the ballast for the track? Well, it's that. It's literally dirt from the driveway. Of course, this has been sieved and any unwanted contaminants removed, such as wood and cat poo. It didn't actually have either of those, I said it for comic effect. But George, surely woodland ground cover isn't just dirt, is it? I hear you ask again. No, it isn't. Good observation. 
The hillside is now sprayed with scenic glue and my homemade leaf scatter is sprinkled on. This is literally just dead leaves collected in autumn, dried out and run through a blender until it's a fine scatter. No, it's not perfect, but it's close enough. And the trees will hide most of it anyway. Time to do my part for the environment and plant some trees. And this is my pointy tool. I don't know where I got it from, but I've had it for many years and I use it for everything that needs stabbing. The trees are dipped in neat PVA and planted in a hole. And now it's just a case of working along the layout, planting trees. I'm randomly adding in the seafoam trees every so often. I have no idea if there's an actual pattern the trees growing in real life, but it looks okay. Oh, and it turns out I made the exact correct amount of trees for the hillside. Sometimes I scare myself. The only issue is the edge around the woodland. Light would hit here and as such things would grow. So the same method used for shrubbery around the river was used here, polyfiber, knock leaf material, etc. I panicked here a bit as it looked bad. So I basically kept adding things until it looked good enough. And there we go, now it looks good enough. In all honesty, despite winging it a bit, I was really happy with the final result. Earlier on I very nearly pulled all the trees back up to lay lower scenery first, but actually it looks alright, and you can't actually see a lot of the hillside below the trees, and the final bits added around the edge blend into the trees nicely. And being the same technique as around the river, it all blends the layout together. Between you and me, and everyone else listening, this week has been really stressing me out and I wasn't sure how to approach the woodland look, so I have actually been avoiding it. But I couldn't really add the scenics around the outside of the layout without doing the middle first, so I had to. And I'm really glad I've done it now. It's got the look I was after, and it will set the mood for the next few weeks of scenic work. The height of the trees also really brings in a sense of scale to the railway. And thanks again for watching. The likes and subscribing that you do really mean a lot. Can I call you my friend? No, you're right, it's too soon for that. Instead, watch these videos and forget I said it. Cheers.